Hey, welcome back to Math Principles. Uh, today we're going to take a look at solving inequalities. Now, solving inequalities works a whole lot like equations. As a matter of fact, all of these steps are exactly identical to what we did for solving equations. Draw the vertical line down the middle, simplify each side, move all your variables to one side, and then work backwards using reverse order of operations and inverse operations to get that variable by itself. The only real difference is that we graph our solutions instead of checking them. Okay, and the way we're going to graph, we're trying to shade on a number line where our answers are. So we'll sketch a number line, we'll put the number of, of what's shown in our answer. We use either an open circle or a closed circle. If it's a less than or greater than, we put an open circle on that number. If it's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, we put a closed circle on that number. And the reason is simple, we're shading where our answers are. If it's just less than or just greater than, that number that we have, say x is greater than 3, 3 is not part of the answer, okay? We have to be greater than 3. But if it's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, now that 3 is part of our solution set. So we want to shade that circle in. Same thing, we want to shade where our answers are. Well, if the inequality opens to the variable, okay? If uh, the alligator eats the bigger number, the variable is the bigger number, we want to shade where the bigger numbers are. Those are over on the right. If the inequality points to the variable, okay, again, alligator eats the bigger number, the variable is the smaller number in that case, and we want to shade where the smaller numbers are. Those are over on the left. Okay, now there is one detail that we want to keep in mind. If we're solving an inequality, and we multiply or divide both sides of that inequality by a negative, we have to reverse the inequality. And we'll see how that happens on one or two of these. So, let's get to it. I have 3x minus 12 is less than 3. First thing we're going to do is draw that vertical line right down the middle. Now, uh, excuse me, each side is about as simplified as it can get. All of my variables are over here on the left, so I'm going to get to work solving. I'll start by adding 12 to both sides. Okay, on the left side, these 12s cancel, and we just have 3x is less than 3 plus 12 is 15. Then, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I have 1x, or simply x, is less than 15 divided by 3 is 5. So we have x is less than 5. Now, graphing your solution. Okay, we start with a number line. And I always like to put 0 on my number line to kind of give me a reference of where the rest of the numbers are. So I have x is less than 5. So the next thing I'm going to do is put 5, because that's the number that's involved in my solution. Now, I have x is less than 5, just less than, not less than or equal to, which means we're going to use an open circle on that 5. That 5 is not part of our solution set, so I'm not going to shade it in. And I want x is less than 5. So I want all of the numbers that are less than 5. The inequality points to x in this case, so we're going to shade to the left, okay? And that's your solution, right here. So it works almost identically to solving equations. Okay, next up, we get a little bit more complex, not a lot. Okay, we'll start out the same way. Vertical line down through that inequality. Okay, the next up, I wanna simplify this left side. So I'll distribute that five. And we'll have six plus five times two is 10. Bring down that minus sign, 5 times x is 5x, is less than or equal to 41. Then we'll combine our like terms. Well, our like terms are right here. This 6 plus 10 gives us 16. So I have 16 minus 5x is less than or equal to 41. The next move, I want to start solving. I want to get that x by itself. They're multiplying by 5 and subtracting from 16. Now the instinct, we see that minus sign and we want to add. But if I do 16 plus 16, I'm not going to get 0. I'm going to get 32. So what we really need to do is subtract that 16 from each side. Because 16 minus 16 is 0. But what's important is this is still negative 5x. 16 minus 16 is 0. 0 minus 5x is going to be negative 5x. And 41 minus 16 is 25. 
Then we'll divide both sides by negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1, so I have 1x, or simply x. 25 divided by negative 5 is negative 5. Now, right here, we divided both sides of this inequality by a negative number. And if we multiply or divide both sides of the inequality by a negative, we have to reverse that inequality. So now we have x is less than or equal to negative 5. And our solution, when we go to graph it, I like to start out pretty much the same way. Have a number line, put 0. Now I have x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Negative 5 is over here. And it's greater than or equal to, which means we're going to use a closed circle on that negative 5. And this inequality opens to the variable. The alligator reads the bigger number. X is the bigger number. I want to show you where those are. And there we go. Okay, next up, over here. We have negative 2 is less than 3 times the quantity x minus 5. We're going to start out the same way. Vertical line. Next, I want to simplify that right side. So, I'll distribute that 3. And I'll have negative 2x is less than 3x minus 15. Now I want to move all of my variables to one side. So I'm going to subtract 3x from each side, move all of my variables over to the left, and this will give me negative 5x is less than negative 15. Then we're going to divide both sides by negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1, so I have 1x, or simply x. Negative 15 divided by negative 5 is positive 3. Now once again, we divided both sides by a negative, and any time we multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative, we need to reverse that inequality. So we end up with x is greater than 3. Now to graph it, sketch a number line. I like to put 0. Some people like to put a bunch of tick marks to show all of the different numbers on the line. I really don't think all of that's necessary. Put a zero to show where the center of that number line is. Put the number in question where it belongs in relation to zero. Three is positive, so it goes on the right. And then graph. Just greater than, not greater than or equal to, means we're going to use an open circle on that three. You don't shade it in because that three is not part of your solution set. Then we want to shade where the answers are. Well, this inequality opens to the variable, so I want to shade to the right. And there we go. There's our solution, and there's the graph of our solution. Okay, last one. 2 minus 3x is greater than or equal to 7 times the quantity, 8 minus 2x plus 12. This one's a little bit of a longer inequality. doesn't change how we're going to approach it. Okay, we start with that vertical line. Okay, then on the right side, I want to simplify. So I'll start by distributing that 7. And I'll have 7 times 8 is 56. Bring down that minus sign. 7 times 2x is 14x. Bring down that plus 12. And everything else stays exactly the same. Okay, then I want to combine my like terms. My like terms here are the 12 and 56. And if I put those together, I get 68. And everything else stays exactly the same. Okay, now I want to move all my variables to one side. I'm going to choose to move them all over to the left. So I've got negative 14x. I'm going to add 14x to both sides. On the right side, those cancel, and we just have 68. On the left side, negative 3x plus 14x is going to be positive 11x. 
Okay, and now we have each side simplified. We have all of our variables together. We're gonna solve reverse order of operations, inverse operations. So I'll subtract the two from each side. And we'll have 11x is greater than or equal to 66. We're almost there. Divide both sides by 11. And we'll have x is greater than or equal to six. Now, to graph our solution, same thing we always do. Draw a number line, put zero near the middle. Now six is a positive, so it belongs over here. And this is greater than or equal to. Or equal to means we use a closed circle on that six. Okay, and this inequality opens to x. If the inequality opens to x, we're gonna to shade to the right. Now notice when we shade on these guys, we shade all the way to the end and we include that arrow. Okay, we're shading everywhere our answers are. Our answer doesn't stop on that number line, it keeps on going, okay? So here's our solution and our graph. So, solve inequalities the exact same way that you would solve an equation. Vertical line, simplify each side, get all your variables on one side, and then reverse order of operations, inverse operations to get that variable by itself. Just keep in mind, if you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, you have to reverse that inequality. When you go to graph, if it's just less than or just greater than, use an open circle. If it's less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, use a closed circle. Shade to the right if the inequality opens to x. Shade to the left if the inequality points to x. Okay, if you have any questions about this, guys, make sure you contact me. Get those questions answered.